What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Main Street Mower. It's been way too long and I just want to say thank you to everyone for watching this video, for tuning in, and I apologize for the long delay between videos. Um, guys, today we are talking about picking the right machine for the right job. So we're going to review the Toro 52 inch grandstand. It'll help you understand why I think this is the best mower for the average landscaper doing residential yards. This is our number one selling product, the Toro Grandstand line. We sell more grandstands than anything else, and it's because they are a fantastic product. We sell a lot of 36s, we sell a lot of 52s, and it's just a great machine. It fits on your trailer well. Its blades match from the 36 to the 52, so they're a great combo on a trailer. Um, I can go on and on and on and on and why I think the Toro Grandstand is a, a great uh, mower for a landscaper doing average residential sized yards, two acres and below. Um, if that's what your primary properties look like, I would recommend this mower. So we're gonna get into detail on why that is and why I think this is better than any other stand up and why I think it is just so amazing and why I love it. I have a lot of mowers in the Toro lineup that I could recommend to you. There's a lot of variations of a 52, but I am partial to this 52, the Grandstand 52. And there's some really uh, specific reasons for that. And I think maybe a lot of people out there are a little bit leery of a stand-up. They think, oh, I don't think I would like that. I think that would hurt my back. I don't think that would be very comfortable. I don't think my guys can handle it. I don't think it's the right for my properties. I think I'd rather sit down. That's what I hear a lot. But I will tell you, every single person that I have had try this or buy one ends up converting every mower in their fleet to a grandstand. And they love them, just adoring them. And I always, I'm not kidding you, see their business succeed even further after having these in their, in their lineup. And I, I attribute that to the simplicity and just this is the right product for the job. As a landscaper, you have lots of little problems, right? You're on a mower all day long. You're driving a trailer all day long. You are, you know, holding a trimmer all day long. You are doing all kinds of stuff all the time. And don't you want to have a product that you think is perfectly tailor-made for you, that is made specifically with you in mind that would do the job the most comfortably, the most easily, the most conveniently, like, you know, I'm not a landscaper. I'm not out there mowing every single day. I see mowers every day. I work on mowers every day. I'm talking to landscapers who use mowers every day. And I get to hear the qualms. I get to hear the celebrations, the, the challenges, the difficulties, and, and the successes. And so when I think of the right tool for the right job, the machine that landscapers buy that solve the most of their problems, that make them the most successful each day that they can be, is the Toro Grandstand. Not too much, not too little. Perfectly satisfied. This is the second generation of the machine. They started making grandstands in 2009. There are a lot of other manufacturers that make a standard. There's Wright standards, there's Gravely Pro stances, the Hustler has a standard, Bad Boy has a standard. They all, everyone's, everyone's has a standard now. John Deere has a standard, but all of them are different. Everyone has a different way of doing it, right? Well, Toro started, they were early in the standard game. They weren't the first. Uh, and their earliest generation of standards were good. They have some issues, they've worked them out. And then the second generation came and that's this. They started this model in 2016. Um, it has tough torque transmissions. This particular model has a Kohler engine. Some of them have Kawasaki's. And I actually really like the Kohler. They seem to last a really long time. It comes in a 36, a 40, a 48, a 52, and a 60. So your standard size, is, the order does not make it in a 72 and they don't make it smaller than a 36. But they cover all the bases, and every single one of them is great. There's not a single grandstand I wouldn't recommend. It just depends on your yard sizes, your trailer size, and your other mowers you're working with. Personally, my favorite setup is a 52 and a 36. They both fit on your trailer really well. Uh, they use the same blade, so they have that in common. With those two mowers, you can get in the gates, you can get in the backyards. You can do larger areas, you can go between trees, you'll fit in everywhere very nicely. 
and you have that commonality between blades. So you can just have one big fat stack of blades, sharpen them all, you're not gonna be switching sizes. You can go to the store and buy a big box of blades and that will cover both your machines. So there's a lot of practical reasons to have those two mowers together. Um, but as far as why do I think the Grandstand is the perfect tailored machine for landscapers, why do I call it my personal favorite mower? If anyone ever asks me, Chip, what's your favorite mower? And I'm like, well, it really depends on your yard. It really depends on your business model, on your properties that you manage. But if I had to pick one mower for an average landscaper who is doing normal residences, two acres or less, with some trees, some obstacles, some hills that could handle all of those things, and that you would go home feeling most comfortable, being most productive, being able to mow the most quickly, and have the easiest time repairing, have the easiest time trailering, the grandstand just tuck, 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 it hits all the boxes and it, it does them beautifully and comfortably. Um, there are lots of mowers that cut grass. We talk about this every time. Lots that make tall grass short. But there's some mowers that do it very well. Like that not just like cut the grass really well, but that just make your life easier. And that is something I love about the grandstand. I'm gonna walk around this and kind of point out some things I like, and we're gonna ride it around the property, and we're gonna, I'm gonna show you some samples and examples of why I think this thing is the absolute best mower for a landscaper. If you have a landscape company and you change your entire fleet to grandstands, I promise you, your business will make more money, you'll be more productive, you'll have happier employees and happier customers. Like, I'm, that's a huge statement, and I know I sound very biased saying that, and maybe you would have that same solution to a degree with other brands, but the way Toro made this product and the way this product is supported is just the best. I just can't get over it. So let me walk around this machine and show you a couple features. First, look at it. Wow. It has this nice guard here protecting your engine, all your electrical stuff. <clears throat> you stand behind this unit. A lot of standards, people always say, oh man, you want to stand between the wheels. And that's an opinion that I strongly disagree with. I've stood on a lot of machines. Your feet are locked in. I can't lean because there's a wall. And so I'm like having to stand upright on a slope and you have to twist your body and articulate rather than being able to lean into the turn. It has a really wide base in the back. So you, heck, you could spread your feet out wide. You can lean into stuff and it's very, very comfortable. Um, like I said, it has this nice plate here that protects your engine from branches and all kinds of stuff. You're behind it so you can shove your mower up underneath trees. You can drive this up underneath a big tree and you're behind the tree. And so you don't have to trim underneath that tree because normally if you're riding a zero turn, you're sitting on top of the deck like this and you can't get underneath the tree because the tree's all in your face and you're all contorted and getting poked. But on a grandstand, you're behind the tree. It's nice, it's convenient. If I gotta pick something up, say my hat over here, and I'm about to mow over it. In a zero turn, you gotta open the handles, pull the brake, climb off. On this, all you do is let go. The blades automatically turn off. You go, you pick up your hat. Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. A real gangster ass nigga plays his cards right. And then you hop back on your machine. And you pull your button up and you go, boom! That's it, that's all you do. And so it's much faster. Your guys are more likely to not run over that soccer ball in the yard or that toy and chop it up and sling it everywhere because it's easier to get on and off the mower, right? So it's going to be less time cleaning up, less complaints from customers. To work on this mower is stupid easy. Boom! There are all your deck parts. You cannot do that with other standards. Other standards, their engine is right on top of all the most important essential crap you gotta get to, and you can't get to it. I can get my covers off. Look at this. But look, I have all my covers off. I can get to my belt. I could take my belt off. Watch this. I could take my belt off and change my belt in like a minute. Watch this. No tools required. I don't think a lot of people's wives can get changed faster than that. That's my belt off, not broken, no tools. I can put it on just as fast. Very practical. This is how fast you can change it. Here. So I'm gonna follow my diagram. I'm gonna put this belt back on. No tools required. I actually have my deck up. I'm gonna lower my deck down. Makes it even easier. Gotta get that out of my way. 
I bring my belt around my clutch, and then that side goes that way, this side goes this way, I pull it around. This is our demo unit. It has close to 300 hours on it. So it's not brand new, but it's been lightly used. Look how much wrap this thing has on this belt. I love the wrap it has. So I like to take it off this one. Put it on that. Keep your fingers out of the way. Bam! How fast is that to change a belt? Your guy's not gonna call you saying, boss, my belt's broken. I'm gonna take it to the shop. And you say, hey, the belt, belt's in the back of the truck. Throw a new one on there. Not that your belt breaks all the time, but you know how it goes. Sometimes they do break. Sometimes you're cutting stuff you shouldn't cut. Sometimes you're mowing that big field. Sometimes you gotta do something crazy. And it's nice to have something so convenient. So you guys can see, you can change the deck belt on this really quickly. No tools needed, and it's quick, easy. Anybody can do it. You can show them how to do it very fast. A lot of these other machines are very complicated to change a belt. Very complicated to change the oil. It's very like finicky how to get up in there. To change the oil on one of these, you flip over your plate, you lower your engine down, and then I drop an oil pan right here on top of my deck. Here, right in front, is my drain hose and my oil filter. I can spin off my oil filter, I crack open my drain hose, use two 11 16 wrenches, pop the tip off, you drain it, you pull your pan out, you take it, and you put your cap back on, you put a new filter in, you put 2.1 quarts of oil in, and you're ready to ride. It's that easy. It's very, very simple. And it's just nice for that reason. If you had to work on both sides of your engine, you can remove the fuel tank on this. So the engine's turned sideways to make this machine narrower, or not as long. And you do have to pull the fuel tank to work on your, your number one cylinder. You have to pull your fuel tank. But to pull your fuel tank is easy. It's four bolts. You take off this little cover here in the back, in this whole, like, I don't know what you call this thing. It comes out really easily. So that, you just unscrew these little knobs. You take out these two or four bolts, 9 16 and then your whole fuel tank will pull out. And so if you accidentally put the wrong kind of gas in here, your guy put diesel in it or something stupid, right? You could take your whole fuel tank off in less than a minute, literally, less than a minute, and dump all that out and put your fresh gas back in, put your tank back in, and you'd be ready to ride. Or you could pull your fuel tank out and work on both sides of your engine, and it also allows you to work on the top sides of your hydros, your clutch, and your drive belt, all from this side very easily. And if you had this open and this open, you got a very wide open machine that is very accessible for anything you need to do to it. And a lot of you guys say, well, I don't work on my own stuff. So that doesn't really matter for me. I like taking it to my dealer, he works on everything. Well guess what? They charge per the hour, they charge per minute, they charge per second. The faster they can do it, the less you pay. So changing a deck belt on this, I charge less than I have to change a deck belt on say a Ferris standard. That thing's wedged up underneath there, way in there, it's all kinds of finagling and pinching your fingers, all kinds of crap. I gotta charge a lot more to change a belt on something like that. On this, it's almost like, hey I'll change it on your trailer in the parking lot, no big deal. Get out of here. Have a good day. And so it, it does matter even if you're not the one working on it. You want to have a machine that's easy for everyone to work on. And if you haven't owned a standard before, why well, I think you should try one. Go to your dealer and demo one. Or just go straight buy one because I know you're going to love it. And if you're going to comment later, Chip, best decision ever. Business is better. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Thank you. You rock, Chip. You're the effing man. Well, well uh, let the record show the witness means my man. <laughs> Check out this. When I am riding on this, the platform has some suspension to it. It has some like squishy rubber dampeners, like bushings. But the best suspension in the world are these old kangaroos right here, buddy. Better than any kind of spring seat, better than the My Ride suspension. The most comfortable way to do your job is standing, riding on your butt, bouncing around on your back, on your spine. That's what's going to cause back pain when you go home after a long day of mowing. If you're leaning into turns and you're using your legs and your knees and you're bobbing and weaving, like, you know, if that's what's going to be comfortable. When you mow with this, it's like you're on a jet ski. You go home with a smile on your face. 
you want to play with your kids, it's comfortable, you're fun, you're having fun. And it's the most, I think, the most comfortable way to mow. And they're narrow, they fit more on a trailer. I can go on and on. So pay attention to how I am my own suspension as I ride. I am using my legs to support my body, right? How I can lean into the turns. I have a lot of mobility. You could do all kinds of crazy stuff. You could be mowing on the craziest angles like an old sailor, right? No, you're not gonna actually do that. I don't recommend that. Tor didn't recommend that, but you could if you had to, right? Crazy scenario. You can mow one-handed and use your string trimmer. I see people doing that. You can mow and use your hedge trimmer. You can mow and use your blower. You can't mow with a blower on your back with a rider because you'll burn your seat or you'll be leaning forward. It's really uncomfortable. This, you can wear a BR600, be cruising at high speeds, 10 miles an hour, and blowing at the same time. This makes that very comfortable to do. Also, something I love is that the seat or the standing platform folds up makes this even narrower, makes it really fit on a trailer nicely. You could fit that 36 and a 52 on a 14 foot trailer with room to spare for a, even a push mower or something. You could really make that smaller trailer work for you better with this type of machine. And if you had something really dangerous, a really crazy slope, or a new guy who just felt really uncomfortable, it'd be easy to train him. If you had him walking behind, it might help his you know, help him think about it. Or if you had to load it onto a dangerous trailer and he wasn't feel comfortable standing on it while driving up the trailer, you can fold it up and walk behind it. So all these little things make it really nice. I like that you can go up underneath bushes. I like that you can do slopes better. I like that you can mow faster because you're using your legs as suspension. I like that you can lean into turns. It's just fun to ride and you're having a good time. And I like recommending this product because I know that anyone that buys this product is going to love it. And I swear, every single person who buys a grandstand slowly ends up converting their entire fleet to grandstands. Every next mower is another grandstand. Whether it's a 36, 52, or 60, 48, 40, they all end up getting another grandstand. It's because they just absolutely love them. They work well for the crews. Everybody enjoys mowing them. Check these videos out. We're going to go mow around the property and uh, see how it does. Check it. Guys, something I forgot to mention that I really love about this machine and appreciate is your perspective. When you're mowing standing from the back of a machine, rather than when you're in between the wheels, there's actually stuff behind you still. But when you are the furthest thing back, it's a very natural driving position. The way it, you turn, you anticipate it, you always feel on balance, not off balance. But the perspective, my peripheral visual vision, right? I can see my back tires while looking forward. Like when I'm going around an obstacle, it's in front of me, it's up here. It's so easy to navigate around trees and flower beds and things because it's literally so visible. I'm always looking forward, so I'm more likely to have a closer, tighter distance to my obstacle than I am without that perspective. Plus, in general, you're up higher than the dust cloud. The dust cloud, when you turn around, normally it'll smack you in the face and you're like, oh, and you keep riding like, oh crap, I don't want to do that again. But with this, you turn around and the dust cloud's lower and you are rised above it. You are above it and you go through it. And so you don't have to worry about which angle and direction you turn as much every time. You don't mind driving through the cloud because the cloud's lower. I wanted you to see how fast you could, op you could go around some of these obstacles and you are more likely to go around things quicker when you're standing. So we're gonna go try some of this big hill here. I'm just gonna show you how my positioning can change. This is 15 easily degrees, maybe even 17, 20 degrees. And no, that's not necessarily in the manual. I just wanna show you an example that this mower can really handle it. And not only can the mower handle it, but it's a comfortable mow. If you're on a hill like this for a long time on a rider, you're having to do like this mad side crunch and it is terribly uncomfortable. On this, you're just kind of changing your leg angle. And it's really, really easy. 
and I feel safe. And if anything were to go wrong and this mower were to start tipping, it's so easy to get off. It's much safer. So check this out. I'm gonna mow on this hill. quickly show you just the transport speed so when you pull your deck all the way up it is transporting at five inches so your deck's nice and high out of the way and then it travels at 10 miles an hour which might not sound like a lot compared to like a golf cart or a, you know dirt bike but for a mower that's hauling butt and you can do it and you feel a little bit safer i feel like on this but i want to just show you real speed how fast it goes if i'm trying to make it back to the truck before rain so check this out <laughs> you had a hard time keeping up. Okay guys, closing thoughts. We got to see how it handles around obstacles. We did hills. We did underneath stuff. We did around turns. You know, I started this video with talking about how you can have a product that is tailor-made for your need. And I see, and it makes me sad when I see some of my customers who know we're the best shop in town and know that we have their best interests in mind, but maybe go buy a different machine simply because of price or something like that. Maybe it was, you know, they saved $500 on this other brand. And they financed it, and if you would have broken that down by payments, the difference would have been dollars a month. And now they're stuck for the next three, four years with this machine that doesn't meet all their needs really well and then they're stuck with using service from another shop and that breaks my heart because man having the right product for your business is so important and you know is the grandstand the best product in every possible field no uh, I mean Tor might argue that and say yes but I'd say I'm sure there's other products that maybe win in certain categories or uh, special you know line items maybe they have a thicker that or a faster this but it's overall the Toro Grandstand has years of data that's gone into it. You know, they've had all of these wonderful little updates and changes. And that if you buy a Toro Grandstand in 2020, it is going to be the, the nicest stander, I promise, for your, for your company. For what your company needs, it's absolutely perfect. If you mow giant fields all day, maybe a Grandstand isn't the best mower for you. If you mow tiny itty bitty yards that would be best off with a push mower. Maybe the grandstand's not best for you. But if your yard can fit a 36, a grandstand would probably be amazing for you. If your yard is anything like these yards, or if your yard is uh, a quarter acre and you need a, you can bust out 50 of them in a day, this thing would just be amazing for you. I have a lot of customers who run this exact machine and they are able to just mow faster and do more work uh, because this thing allows you to do work faster and it does it very well and it's easy to work on it's fast it's fun if you're curious if this is the right ma machine for you call a local Toro dealer talk to them about your properties and they can help you make a recommendation or go to a dealer and demo one 
Uh, you know, this is a demo if you're in Orlando. If you wanted to try one of these, this is one. You could come try this one. Um, and I promise you, you're going to like it. And some people, you know, aren't that coordinated. Some people maybe can't ride a bike or a skateboard. I've never ridden a jet ski. And it's a little intimidating to think about standing up. And that's okay. And I've met a, only a very few, I mean, I'm talking maybe count on one hand, people who've taken this, demoed it, and said, I just, I, I don't know. It's hard for me to stand up. I like to sit down. For you, Toro has a lot of great sit-down products. But as far as my recommendation, my preference, if I think about the things I like to use every day that make me feel comfortable and make me feel productive, if I was a landscaper and I had to mow every single day, 100%, no doubt in my mind, I would own a Toro Grandstand. This one right here. With a Kohler, 52 inch, it's the Mac Daddy. Believe it. Guys, the only reason I'm making this video is not because Toro asked me to, not because I'm going to benefit. Really, I bet most of my customers in Orlando already know me or our shop. But I want to make this video because I actually believe in this product and I actually believe it'll help all you landscapers out there who are debating on which standard to run. And I think Toro is the best product. I think the Toro Grandstand is the absolute best. And I really appreciate your guys' time and I appreciate you watching. I appreciate your subscriptions. Guys, we're going to be making a lot more videos this winter. I'm talking a ton more videos. Toro's got a whole bunch of new stuff coming out. Steel's got new stuff coming out. There's going to be videos flying up on your feeds like crazy. And you want to subscribe. You want to check them all out. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Have a good day. Come on!